Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, DIY Nails by Wood. I'm going to be showing you my Disney Nails Maleficent. First things first is I'm going to do two dips of Barbara, the black on my ring finger, because later in the video I'm going to be chroming it with a surprise. Now this first dip, it actually did not cover my nail evenly, and I believe that's because the base started to dry, <laughs> because it is so long. So the second dip that I do with the black, I'm actually going to go much faster to get that even coverage because you want a nice smooth even layer of black before you chrome any nail that you chrome because chrome really makes any bumps stand out and that's much better. So next is North Star Glow which is the white glow and I'm going to be doing two dips of this as well on my middle finger and the reason is I wanted a nice white light contrasting background because I'm going to be doing my Maleficent design on this nail and my Maleficent design is actually a little dark so the contrast I think no I know it it looks good at the end <laughs> so again I do two dips of this of the white and then always clean it up always clean around those cuticles next is Magnificent here which is a glitter by Rocky Mountain Dip Powder. She released a collection called Disney Villains a few months ago. It's actually the reason why I picked Maleficent for this challenge because I knew I was like, oh, I have this glitter that is all about Maleficent and it has all her colors in it. Now, the first dip of the glitter, I mean, it's, it's great how it is, but for what I'm going for, I wanted it darker. So I actually go for a second dip. I brush off as much as I can so it doesn't get bulky. And then I go in for the second dip. I normally don't do two dips of a chunkier -ish glitter because it can get bulky but in this case I wanted it darker and it worked perfectly that is exactly what I wanted <laughs> for Maleficent I try and remove any glitter that is kind of stuck in the cuticle and pat it down as well as kind of squeeze it in on the sides to make sure it's nice and clean and easy to file and it's perfect next we're going to be doing the pointer finger with supernova glow and electric lime glow and we're going to be doing, it's a little different, it's a 360 ombre. I'm going to be using triple vitamin liquids here first, but I end up changing it out. So my goal is I wanted a strip of green down the middle, and then I wanted the green surrounded 360 by the purple. And the reason why I brought it with liquids <laughs> that I changed it out is those liquids dried so fast that all this purple I'm doing right here is actually not sticking at all. Yeah, no, nada. <laughs> so I have to change my game plan. I'm gonna use Rossi liquids because they dry much slower and it'll give me time to do this 360 ombre before it dries. And then because I did green first last time, I'm gonna be alternating as I would a normal ombre with purple. And to get the 360 effect, I'm gonna be doing vertical but staying just close to the edges on each side. Then I'm going to be doing as if I'm doing an ombre by the cuticle and an ombre by the tip, but just trying to stay concentrated in those areas so I get that circle in the middle. I also changed my brush here to my fan brush. Because it's so thin and it's so spread out, I can concentrate that green right in the center and then kind of have it spread out like a little ombre. And here I start getting, I start getting and developing that stripe. And you can see it with the liquid here, it already looks good. So my next layer, I start to tap on a little bit of green with my fan brush, and then I again, I again go in with my 360 ombre with the purple, doing the sides, and then the cuticle, and then the tip. I'm gonna go ahead and clean around my cuticles, always. And you guys will see here in a second what I was going for. When Maleficent goes to, you know, just bow out, <laughs> you see that strip of green fire. And I feel like this nails it. That's exactly what I was going for. Next is the Electric Lime Glow and Magnificent Glitter. We're going to be doing an ombre of these two colors on my thumb. Now first, I'm going to be doing one solid dip of the Electric Lime Glow. And perfect, great coverage. Now for the ombre on my thumb, I'm gonna use the Rossi liquids again just because of the slow drying time. It'll give me time to cover the entire length of this nail. 
as well as do the ombre. So it's there's so much surface area because it's so long. It gives me time to cover it. And then it's also going to give me time to go back in and do the green ombre on the tip here. And then do the ombre by the cuticle of the glitter. Now when I do the second layer, I do it this way so that you don't get a big hump of glitter. And I actually have a more detailed video on my Instagram of how and why I do the ombre this way. Now once that's done, I try and pat it down, clean the cuticle, and I very carefully wipe off that green area because I don't want to wipe off too much glitter. Now the final layer, I add a really thin, a thin amount of liquids, and then I just add a tiny bit more of that glitter to bring the ombre down more towards the middle of the nail. So it's a little bit more blended. And that's all I did, and it changed it so much. All right, I'm now, of course, I'm going to be pushing the cuticles back and I'm gonna add a dip of clear over every single one of my nails. I do it on solids, I do it on ombres, I do it on glitters, just so that when you're filing a buffing, of course, you don't file off all that hard work. And then also trace around the cuticle, even with clear, just because you don't want it to mess up those lines. Or get chunky. <laughs> Now, once I'm done with the clear, I'm going to go ahead and I activate, and then I give it a few... Oh, wait. Sorry. <laughs> I brush off the clear with a hard manicure brush after I gave it time to dry, then I activate all my nails. Once I activate, I give it a good couple minutes to make sure it's really dry and it's really hardened before I go into file. Now, off camera, I actually filed all my nails, but I saved the pointer for the video. I use my buffer block and I file in a rounded motion and then I go in with my glass file. I go, in, go I kind of go at a flat angle and then I kind of raise it as I go at an angle just around that cuticle and it helps get the cuticle area thin as well as angle downward towards into that cuticle. A nice little curve. I also file a little bit underneath my nail to get rid of any excess nail product because that could distort the look of your nail shape. So. I try and get those lines nice and clean, and then lastly, I face my finger away from me, keeping it flat while moving my file horizontal. Next, I'm going to be doing my ring finger in chrome. I push back the cuticles, and I'm going to be using CF5. I start off by using a gel top coat, and I want to make sure that I do nice, a nice even layer covering the entire surface of the nail and capping the tip. I also left the surface a little rough when filing so that it can stick to it very well. I under cured for about 25 seconds and then using an eyeshadow brush I start to buff the chrome onto the onto my nail. And you can see it's it's already looking beautiful and smooth and that color, the blue from to purple to pink color shift. I'm gonna move my light a little closer so you can you can really see that effect. And it's gorgeous. <laughs> I have been wanting to use this color forever. I'm gonna brush off any excess chrome powder and then I'm actually gonna take my glass cuticle pressure to kind of trace around my cuticle because I've noticed whenever I've chromed, I get a little bit of chrome powder stuck in that cuticle that my pick just doesn't get out. Once that's done, I top with another layer of gel top coat, making sure to cover the entire surface and cap that tip. Now once this is done, I go ahead and cure for the full one to two minutes. Now we're gonna mix up some bubbles. Surprise! <laughs> we're doing chrome bubble nails for the first time ever. So I mix the bubbles up and tell that it's foamy and I apply a gel top coat. I apply the same gel top coat and I don't cure it at all right now. While it's still wet, I'm gonna use my fan brush here to carefully load the bubbles onto the surface of my nail. And I wanna make sure I cover every bit of the surface. You know, I missed a little bit of the side right here and I'm just gonna add a few more bubbles. Now's the time that we fully cure for the one to two minutes. Once it's done, I use a little rubbing alcohol on a, on a wipe or a paper towel and you see those bubbles. You see the bubble effect. And then we have that chrome into there. I'm trying to clean a little bit off my skin because that chrome just really stuck to my skin too and that's good, it's just so thick <laughs> in a good way. Now, my goal for this was to go for the texture of her wings in this picture. I saw it and I was just so inspired and that's the entire reason I went for this and I think it worked. All right, lastly, on to the painted design. I had tried to do a portrait 
a realistic portrait, and I had also tried to do a detailed cartoon animated version, and so many fails. <laughs> it's such a tiny service, it just didn't work. And I came across this black outline, and it was so beautiful, and it was so clean. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to do a black outline of Maleficent with bright red lips. And as slow as this looks in this video, this is actually at two speed. I had to go extremely slow to get it, get the lines nice and clean. And this is also the tenth time trying to do this nail. Just because I couldn't get it how I wanted it, I couldn't get it even. So this is the tenth time is the charm. I'm also using the thinnest brush that I have, and I'm also using just regular acrylic paint. So once I do her neck scarf, and then I start to do the outline of her headwear, I stop and I'm going to go ahead and try and do the horns. My previous fails taught me <laughs> that trying to do the head and everything else first and then the horns, I didn't have enough room for the horns and they kept becoming misshapen. So doing the horns first, I get a nice little outline of where I want them and how I want them shaped. And then I can always change the head shape around a little bit, but now my horns won't be messed up. And then once I get the outline, I start to fill it in slowly. And here I'm filling the horns in thinner than I want, but it's always better to do a little bit and keep adding than do too much and you can't take it away. And off camera, I actually thickened them up a little bit. It was just really hard to thicken them up while leaning over my, ca my table and leaning over my camera stand. All right, there we go. Happy with that. Now I'm painting the crown of her head, and then I'm going to be filling that in. All right, now that that's done, I'm going to be doing her lips, and I start off with the highermost part of her lips by her, where there would be a cupid's bow on a mouth. And the top lip, I actually mixed a little bit of purple into my red here on my, on my uh, palette because I want that contrast of color. So it's not just one solid red lip or pair of lips. The dark lip, I do, the top lip, I do a little bit darker and then the bottom, I do like the bright red. It's a little hard to see on camera, but the contrast in person is really good. Now, once I get the basic outline of the lips, I go in and add a little bit more paint to make it a little bit more thicker. Now that we're done with that, push back my cuticles, I'm going to be topping all my nails off with a gel top coat. Uh, I think I said it earlier, I left the surface of my nails the tiniest bit rough so that the gel can stick to it. And then I cap the tip and then I go on the surface so you don't get any humps and it's nice and smooth. Now for my Maleficent design nail, I waited for the acrylic to dry. It wasn't too long, it was maybe five minutes just to make sure the acrylic was dry so it wouldn't smudge, especially since this was my 10th time doing it. Now in the gel top coat, it sticks to that rough white surface and it seals in that acrylic. Perfect. I cure for the full one to two minutes and it looks great. I'm gonna add a little bit of oil. There we go, nice and shiny and smooth. And it glows! Thank you for watching!